In Pixar's Soul, we all got to join Joe on his misadventure into the great before as he tried to escape his fate, which of course was to go to the great beyond. The story goes, Joe Gardner had finally gotten the opportunity he'd been waiting for, the chance to become a real jazz musician. It's something that he'd been aspiring to for his entire life. However, on his walk home during all of the excitement, Joe wasn't paying attention to his surroundings. He narrowly avoids being squished by a ton of bricks, only to walk right over and fall down a manhole in the middle of the street. The next time we saw Joe was as a soul who was heading up the escalator into the great beyond. However, after finally achieving his dream, he wasn't quite ready to go yet, so he fights the escalator and runs against it. That's how he ends up in what they call the great before, the place where souls get ready to inhabit bodies on Earth. This was where Joe meets 22 and is accidentally tasked with helping her earn her pass to Earth by finding her passion, though it isn't long before the two figure out how to get to Earth their own way. Only things didn't go quite as planned, and when they arrive at Earth, 22 ends up in Joe's body instead of Joe's soul. Meanwhile, Joe ends up inside of Mr. Mittens, the therapy cat. Now, when Joe realized that he wasn't in his body, he very humorously questions, then why am I in a cat? The simple answer would be that poor little Mr. Mittens was in the wrong place at the wrong time and is now going to need a support pet for himself by the end of this entire ordeal. No, seriously, Joe asked a good question that I think a lot of us had by the time the movie was over. Why was he in a cat's body? And better yet, at the end of the movie, movie, how did Mr. Mittens even make it back to his body? I mean, the last thing we saw of him was that he was heading up the escalator into the great beyond. So, not to get too dark or anything, but you would think that since Mr. Mittens' soul was no longer on Earth when Joe left his body, then Mr. Mittens' body would just sort of drop dead, wouldn't it? I mean, Mr. Mittens went to the great beyond. By all accounts, he shouldn't have been able to make it back to Earth, but he somehow did. However, after some digging, we think that we not only found the answer to how Mr. Mittens made it back into his body, but we believe that his journey back into his body might also have answered some other questions we had about both the great before and the great beyond. Now, sit tight while we discuss a few of the more open-ended questions that had been left for us after the movie, and at the end of the video, we'll talk about what we think happened to Mr. Mittens and how he returned. So, if Mr. Mittens' fate was what you came to see, you can skip to the end to check out our answer to that. Following the release of Soul, there was a lot of debate surrounding the concept of animals in the film. The big question was, do animals have souls? Now, most people instinctively want to say yes because animals are the best thing ever. Like, how could they not have a soul? But when you watch the movie, they never specifically show any souls that resemble animals in the great before or the great beyond. This has led quite a few fans to be unsure about whether or not animals have souls. And if they do, do they go through the same type of process that the human souls have to before they can inhabit a body on Earth? From our perspective, we think that the animals for sure have souls. I mean, how else would you explain the fact that Mr. Mitten's soul made it onto the escalator to the great beyond. So the real question is, why don't we see animal souls in the great before with all of the other souls? Well, we think that you might, and you just don't realize it. You see, our theory is that in the beginning, all souls are the same. Animal and human souls are almost indistinguishable until they finish their time in the great before, and upon heading to Earth, the soul gets to choose the body it lands in. I mean, think about it. The directors of the film have already confirmed that the souls don't have genders in the great before, which means that they get them when they get to Earth. If you combine that with the fact that Joe's soul was able to inhabit the body of a cat with no issues, then it would make sense that any soul could go into any living being. I mean, Mr. Mittens probably could have even ended up in Joe's body when Joe took his if it wasn't already taken by 22. The concept of a soul being able to choose their body is even supported by the Jerry's in the movie when they are explaining to Joe that someone's spark and their purpose are two totally different things. Your spark isn't your purpose. That last box fills in when you're ready to come live, is what Counselor Jerry explains to Joe, and we think that's a great answer. You see, a soul's spark didn't have to be anything specific, like a hobby or a goal. A person's spark is the moment that makes them want to be alive. So what if Mr. Mittens, for whatever reason, had the aspiration to be a fabulous feline, and when he got the opportunity to go to Earth, that's the form he chose? Now, you might be wondering, why is this even important to know? It's because the answer gives us a lot more information about other aspects of the souls in the film. 
It means that not only are souls non-specific to species or gender, but once they inhabit a particular body for any extended period of time on Earth, they seem to identify with that body. For instance, when we see Mr. Minton's soul on the escalator, he maintains his cat shape along with the way he talks, or meows in this case, meaning, at least until he hits the great beyond, Mr. Minton's soul is still technically a cat. Now, we don't quite know what happens when a soul makes it back to the great beyond, although from what we can gather, it looks like there's a chance that when the souls make their way up the escalator and hit that white ball of energy, that their souls could possibly be transformed back into their original form, whatever that may be. Which begs the question, how are new souls made, or where do they come from? Well, the first time that we see new souls is when Joe ends up in the Great Before. This is where we find out that the Great Before is where the new souls are given their personality traits to make them individuals. But when we actually get to see the new souls, we see them not only wandering around learning new skills and exploring, but they're also seems to be a finite number of these new souls, meaning that there isn't an endless supply of them. The movie never really explains where they come from. We don't know if it's the Jerry's who make them, or if they come to be in some different way altogether. One theory that we think seems really plausible is that the souls are actually reincarnated from the energy source that's referred to as the Great Beyond. I mean, we know that each soul gets its personalities from the Jerry's, and science has taught us that energy, the souls in this case, cannot be destroyed, nor can it be created. So, what if the souls, when they hit the great beyond, just get reverted back into their original state, only to be shaped in the great before once more before making another trip to Earth. Think about it. When you look at the great before, doesn't it seem more like it's a prepping place for the souls rather than a place that creates them? It's clear that the Jerry's are only in charge of preparing the souls to move on to the real world. None of them seem capable of producing new souls. They're more like indifferent guiding and tracking beings than creation producing vessels. The little souls in the great before are the ones who are creating and exploring, not the Jerry's. The logic behind what creates new souls could even be something as simple as if a soul finds its way to the great beyond, but it has a big enough drive or spark to be part of the living again, then it gets another chance. I mean, I know it's all speculation, but it seems like, overall, the soul gets to decide where it goes and what it gets to be, especially after we learn from the movie that souls are the ones that create purpose by putting meanings on things and actions, not the other way around. So why wouldn't it be able to decide that it wants to go back to the great before and start its journey over. This could even be the answer as to how Joe ended up in the great before to begin with. He fought the journey to the great beyond so much, he had such a strong will to live, that he was given another opportunity. Only instead of going directly back into his body, perhaps his soul was showing signs of not being content as Joe Gardner. Thus, his energy ended up back in the great before only with his personal consciousness still attached. And his only way back to Earth as Joe Gardner, not a new soul with new experiences in life was to rediscover his spark, hence why he wasn't directly placed back into his original body right away. But remember, this part of the film was clearly meant to be up to our own personal interpretations based on how each of us perceives life and death. This is just one of the best theories we could come up with that seem to make the most sense. So if you guys have any theories or ideas as to how new souls are made, please let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you guys. All right, all right, so we have an idea about the great before and great beyond, and how they are just the holding places for the souls before they possibly get to be reincarnated into whichever form they please, whether it be human or animal. But that still doesn't tell us how in the world Mr. Mittens got back from the great beyond and into his cat body after Joe's soul left it. And to be honest, the movie doesn't tell us either, but with all of the information we have, we can certainly try to speculate the proper answers. The easiest and one of the more accepted answers among fans is that Mr. Mittens never made it all the way up the escalator, and instead he was able to go back to his own body once Joe left it since Mr. Mittens was merely kicked out of it rather than actually dying. Plus, as we know, souls experience time differently in the great before, and most likely the great beyond. Time isn't really specified more than that in the movie. Movie, but it could explain how Mr. Mittens had more time to ride that escalator for a little bit while Joe and 22 figured out their issues on Earth. That's the simplest answer, but we have two more ideas from you that were mentioned by the writers and the director of the movie that personally seem to be more interesting. You see, one solution that the writers came up with is that the mentor that Joe was impersonating, Dr. Borgensen, was the one who ended up in Mr. Mittens' body. Not only would he have needed a place to go as a soul, but Dr. Borgensen was also a therapist in his human life, making him the perfect soul to inhabit a therapy cat. It's like he went full circle. 
Or do you remember the saying about cats having nine lives? Well, the director of Soul had the idea that the very concept could be applied to Mr. Mittens. In fact, the director mentioned that they had made a storyboard layout for a sequence that would have shown exactly how Mr. Mittens would have returned to his body. Maybe we'll get to see a Pixar short from them on Disney+. Plus. If we're lucky, Pixar's Soul was a film that many found to be quite introspective, and we loved how thought-provoking it was. What do you guys think about our interpretation of how the great before and great beyond work in terms of creating new souls? Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. As for now, that's all, Disney fans. Let us know what video you'd like to see next in the comments, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.